AI and analytics have taken the world by storm. All of us are aware of a number of examples around us where AI has manifested it itself in multiple ways. No longer AI is a fact of uh, science fiction or is it restricted to advanced warfare alone. Um, we find that uh, there are innumerable examples which are touching our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Whether it is Alexa in the kitchen, whether it is um, email prompter in Gmail or whether it is uh, self-driving cars, we have a number of such exciting examples around us. To talk up to talk about uh, how AI has evolved and how AI will evolve in future, we have with us Mayur Data, who has a very impressive background. Delighted to have you with us, uh, Mayur. Uh, we would like to start by requesting you to tell us how AI has evolved over the years and um, what do you see the future for AI from here on? First of all, thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here um, and to uh, share my <coughs> views with the forum. Um, like you said, uh, you know, AI is no more something that's you know only in the academic circles, something that's only talked about by professors and students. It's it's all around us, um, right from products like Alexa um, or products like Google Home and so on. Um, there are many other places where you might not even realize that AI is helping you out, right? And uh, it's indeed a very exciting field and a field that has, in my opinion, come of age and, and uh, I think there's still a long way to go as well. So to give a brief historical perspective about AI and, and how it is very important to industry today, um, you know, statistics has been around for a very long time. And statistics has been used for various number crunching in industry for the longest time. Um, I, I would say around uh, 90s, mid 90s and, uh, and so on, the field of machine learning started gaining importance and the idea there is very simple. Um, there are a number of tasks that humans do, uh, be it cognitive tasks or, or other simple tasks and the question is can we teach computers to do these tasks for us uh, and the reason to teach computers is very simple of course that computers can, can do the same tasks much faster at scale which humans cannot do and of course from an industry perspective it also means cost optimization rather than hire operation people to do the task, we can now have computers do the same tasks for you. And over uh, time, I would say uh, in around 2010 and so on, uh, you know, artificial intelligence started becoming a lot more interesting and famous. And one of the um, reasons this happened was because we reinvented an old technology called neural networks. And um, uh, some professors from uh, Canada uh, in New Toronto collaborated with uh, uh, industry, uh, specifically Google, and they created this new field called deep learning. Deep learning, like I said, is basically reinvention of neural networks and making them uh, applicable to big data um, and uh, scaling them to solve a lot more interesting problems than the toy problems that we were using them before. So that's very briefly, at a very high level, uh, an evolution of how we've come here from statistics to machine learning to now artificial intelligence. So um, it will be really very interesting for our students and um, others who are watching this program uh, to know some of these examples of where particularly let's say in Flipkart um, you have looked at such applications in which of these three areas yeah. uh, you have seen the most benefit coming for uh, Flipkart. Sure. Now, I don't know if how many people are aware of this, but literally billions of advertisements are shown to people on a daily basis. And for showing one advertisement to you, hundreds or thousands of adver uh, advertisements are selected and scored before figuring out which is the right uh, ad to show to you or which is the winning ad. Now clearly, if you do the math, what you're thinking of is trillions of competitions, trillions of ads being scored on everyday basis. That's something that humans cannot do. It's simply not feasible for humans to do it. And this is a fantastic example of how machine learning has enabled this technology. And today it's responsible for the revenues of one of the biggest companies in the world. And, and not just Google, in fact, uh, online advertising is something that powers many other companies as well. 
So that's drawing from uh, uh, Google and, and as you guys know, uh, there are many other applications including self-driving car that Google has uh, uh, invented, uh, including, um, you know, uh, a simple task like taking YouTube videos and automatically transcribing them so that you see the closed captions uh, to applications like Google Home, which is very similar to Alexa and you can talk to it, you can converse with it, get answers to simple questions and so on and so forth. So those are some of the applications where a company like Google is using it. What are the specific ways in which students can develop themselves and what are the specific skill sets employees would be looking for if they were to be hiring them for these areas related to uh, data management, analytics, AI, uh, machine learning, deep learning and so on. One of the aspects about the industry uh, that is not emphasized enough is like what you pointed out the data management part of it. Um, it is a lot of buzz about data sciences but scientists and particularly data scientists are only so effective as the underlying tools and the data that is provided to them. And I think this is one aspect that I've seen our industry not emphasize uh, or highlight as much and not just industry but even the, uh, the underlying academic institutions and so on. So I think what we need is also good courses in data management, whether it is databases, big data technologies, the right architectures for storing data, the right schemas for storing data, the right kind of computing paradigms for them. Um, and I think, you know, uh, uh, courses are being offered in that, but I think a lot more needs to happen in that uh, area. I've seen uh, specifically uh, companies like Google uh, be very successful because they balanced the two very well. They had fantastic teams handling the, the engineering and the data management aspect of it, which really made life easy for the data scientists. And when I say it made their life easy, it made them a lot more productive. So I think that balance has to, is important. Every company should also focus on making sure they capture their data correctly, they store it correctly. And what that means is hiring the right data engineers and the right data managers as well. What are the typical uh, roles that are available in this whole world of uh, data science? Data engineering deals more uh, in areas like distributed systems, storage, schema management, uh, uh, and, and, and also big data analysis, which is basically about distributed algorithms uh, to or, or other paradigms, not just specifically algorithms. It's more for people who love engineering systems, who build distributed systems, who have traditionally uh, done databases. Uh, so it's a very similar field in that sense. Data sciences, like I said, is uh, more for people who are interested in in your, uh, you know, uh, like I said, the statistics or the computer scientists uh, and the uh, people who have done algorithms and computational theory and who figure out, you know, how to best use the data and, and make sense out of it. How do you extract patterns out of it in the most efficient way? Um, so that's what roughly the two roles are. Uh, in industry today, these roles are being offered very distinctly. Uh, there is role for data engineers, uh, there is role for, uh, for people in distributed systems of course beyond data engineering but there is a very distinct role for data scientists and data analysts uh, who use the underlying frameworks built by the data engineers and then solve the underlying business problem. So there are opportunities galore, uh, that's what I hear you say Absolutely. Mayur in this whole space of data science and depending upon one's aptitude, one's interest. Uh, there are uh, really exciting avenues available for building careers. Um, while we have spoken a lot about data science, we have spoken about how a computer science specialist or the statistics uh, specialist could um, actually work in this area, I would like you to also provide some thoughts and advice students who come from arts or commerce or science background who may not have studied computer science, but they are going to be working um, willy-nilly around AI and a whole lot of data and analytics. So what would be your advice for such students, uh, for such um, uh, people who are specializing in these streams? You know, the very uh, high level analogy I can give you is that a lot of us are not uh, mechanical engineers, but we still know how to use a car because we understand what a car does. And I think very sim something very similar is happening with uh, AI, machine learning and data sciences, right? There are well defined techniques and if you understand what the technique does, then you can apply it to your domain. And in fact, what you bring in is your very deep domain knowledge to make sure that we are solving the right problem. 
Um, therefore, these this technology is being applied in a variety of areas, like you said, which includes commerce, which includes medicine, which includes uh, other sciences and arts, even for that matter. Um, just the other day, um, you know, I uh, was listening to a talk uh, where uh, this person was analyzing scripts of plays and figuring out which parts of the play would uh, keep the audience more engaged by analyzing the words in the underlying script. So of course, it's it's not a very commonplace application, but that just gives you an example of how even arts can benefit from data science. I would like you to just uh, share some thoughts on how should academic institutions who are offering arts, commerce, uh, such streams, how should they gear up to provide this kind of overview for their students? Um, I think, uh, you know, I would say that based on my experience uh, from the industry and also, uh, you know, we collaborate with academics, uh, we collaborate with academic institutions uh, to have successful internships and other programs. Um, one thing I can say is that, you know, data science is a field which requires data. And today, while there's a lot of data in the open domain uh, on the internet and so on, a lot of interesting data is also with the industry. Therefore, it is very important for academia to collaborate with industry so that they can actually solve problems uh, in a way that has access to data and they're, they're solving real world problems. And that's happening. You know, professors from computer science departments, operations research department are collaborating with some of the uh, companies that are out there to solve uh, some of these problems. So that's one aspect, which is like collaborative industry because it's very hard to um, appreciate these problems just sitting in academia where you don't have access to data and also to validate your ideas you still need the data therefore the collaboration with industry is important to your problem about uh, to your question about how uh, you know uh, institutions in arts commerce science etc uh, what they should do I would say that just like when I was graduating from an IT even though I was doing a computer science degree we had courses in economics and arts and so on so that we could appreciate what those fields are about so that we could then think about how we could apply technologies to the fields in the same way even though your major or your main course would be on your core uh, faculty which is arts uh, science commerce etc it is worthwhile offering one or two courses at the right time in the curriculum so that students have an appreciation for what this field is about uh, and and they're already seeing it in their day-to-day -day life right but i think teaching them a little bit of that formalism teaching that what the technology can do, can prepare the right uh, uh, leaders of the future, even from uh, these uh, streams of uh, uh, education. Thank you very much, Mayur. That has been a fabulous discussion we've had on uh, the role of role and importance of AI, not just uh, for uh, building successful careers for um, IT students or computer science uh, graduates, but how everybody can benefit and everybody should know something about AI even before they launch their respective careers in the corporate world. Thank you very much. <laughs>